What's up, everybody? Brothers, sisters, psychonauts, and seekers of truth. It is Anonka, and welcome to my bazaar. Today, I have an Amanita Muscaria trip report for you. The title of this trip report is Only Positive Effects God and Infinity, and was submitted to Erowid in 2021 by the user Jason G. With all that being said, let our story begin. I ate two of these and didn't die. When I Google image search most dangerous mushroom, the Amanita muscaria fly agaric fills the screen. After lots of research and reading books about this mushroom, together with my friend Chaim, we each ate two of them, raw and freshly picked from the forest. After eating the mushrooms, we fell asleep pleasantly and gradually within 30 minutes on the sunny grass, naked and covered with a tarp, me, and in a sleeping bag, Chaim. If we did it again, we would both like to have a prepared, cozy, shady spot to relax and sleep next time. During the dreams, the mushroom communicated clearly and in English with me. That it was not dangerous. It is a tool to heal on all levels that can be used as often as I like, and to not be afraid. It was a very peaceful sleep. Chaim's mushroom communicated to him that sometimes you need to let things go that are holding you back, and to take action immediately when you feel it. So, when he awoke, he vomited up some mushrooms and things he didn't need. I didn't vomit or feel sick at any time, but before sleeping, I felt a strong urge to shit. So I did. Upon awakening and after Chaim vomited, we both felt amazing and started to do exercises because we felt so light. At this point, we both urinated again and drank it immediately, as our body should have alchemized the mushroom for us by now. We decided to pack our things and start hiking home. And now this feeling of lightness was increased substantially. Not only was I light and agile on mental, physical, and emotional levels, but intentions for the moment were incredibly clear. It was as if all of my bodily senses, hot, cold, hungry, noise, slash visual distractions, etc., had their volume knobs turned to one, and my present moment, well-defined intention, was turned up to twelve. Although I could consciously choose to put my attention on my senses, they did not control my choices or distract me significantly. All that mattered is what I wanted to do in that moment, and I was completely focused and in the flow state no matter what. This state was pure bliss, and the mind was perfectly clear, essentially the opposite of ADHD. I was happy to get a glimpse of how reality can be experienced in that state, which was honestly a first for me. It was a very happy moment for me to realize that this state was possible to experience, and I am using it as a reference experience now to align myself to in my everyday life. Our bags didn't feel heavy at all. Our footsteps were floating, and we started walking down the valley with the intention of returning home to a small town in Switzerland. Sometimes I also felt a bit uncoordinated, lackadaisical, and not perfectly balanced slash focused on my body at times walking left and right for a couple of seconds and then taking my awareness back into my body before recovering posture and balance. We continued walking down the valley, hitchhiking cars and enjoying being in the present moment and in the flow state. 
A van stopped with an older German couple, and we let them know about our mission of finding and eating the fly agaric. They told us that we would die if we ate it, and we told them we felt great. They were very nice. We shared some conversation about their home state, and they dropped us down in a town. We got another ride from a man who loved running. I asked if there is any question that he has that he would like an answer to, and he spoke of his mother's health diagnosis. And then that led into another discussion of how he thinks all this pandemic craziness is totally illogical, and what steps he is taking to maintain his freedom with his friends. We enjoyed each other's company a lot. He dropped us off at the spot we began our journey from, only on the other side. At this point, it was about three hours after we had taken the mushrooms and an hour since we drank our urine, and our consciousness and level of awareness was totally shifted. I experienced Chaim's reality as if it was my own, and it seemed our voices and beings were one. It was as if I was speaking from both of our viewpoints, and there was no separation slash difference between the two of us as to who was perceiving and experiencing reality. As I sat next to and looked at Chaim, I observed myself viewing him from his viewpoint. He experienced all the same, and it was as if both of our experiences were simultaneously experienced by both thus making both just one in the end. I saw Chaim's avatar as one in an infinite grid of other beings, all connected in the same way. When we spoke with others, it was with heightened clarity, and our intentions were pure and loving. People responded fantastically and happily to us, mirroring our state. Once we enjoyed our environment and felt like moving on, I decided to hitchhike at the road again. Within ten seconds, a car had stopped and said they were going to our exact destination. Of course. We arrived, got out of the car and started walking. I began to perceive everything, infinity and the looping, perfect circle nature of the universe. I saw in my vision an infinite number of screens, each one frame after another, of the same life timeline. For every moment in life, there are an infinite number of alternative, spontaneous decisions to be made by everything and everyone. And each separate decision creates its own entire timeline and infinite number of offshoots. The universe is limitless, and all possibilities have already happened, are happening, and will happen. I was watching the universe and all the possible timelines from a zoomed-out perspective. I was able to perceive the greatness and unity of it all from the Creator's perspective. I felt myself experiencing pleasurable body sensations breathing, taking in visual beauty with my eyes, and pleasant noises. Then a few seconds later I would experience shortness of breath, an unpleasant vision and noises, and then the feeling of internal pain, and tripping on a rock and hurting myself, all within a few seconds. I wasn't directly experiencing it as my physical body slash avatar, and I wasn't actually hurt. All the sensations lasted for less than a second. It was more like a sample plate of experiences that I was being shown to indicate that they are all part of the same life and are equally valuable. I was being taken on a tour of the universe, infinity, the looping nature of life, and what the human experience is made from. After many such incredible, beautiful visions that seemed to overlay and occupy my entire visual field, surely not fully conscious of everything around me, 
that I would normally be conscious of when sober. My consciousness zoomed with a magical whooshing sound back into my body on earth, and I found myself walking alone without shame. At sunset, about two hours after my last memory together with him, all I remembered was walking with him near another lake. Then I regained consciousness next to my current location again. I had no memory of how I got there, but I was already walking when I regained consciousness. I was unsure if I was in the same reality as before, as I had just experienced and explored many different timelines. Did people still speak English and French? I walked into a bar, gave everyone a bonjour, and luckily they seemed to all speak French. I wished them a good evening and started walking again, wondering where Chaim was and how to find him. I thought he might have gone back to my apartment, so I walked home. I was still unsure if I was in another reality, where someone else was renting my apartment. So when I successfully entered, and it was our stuff, it was a relief. I didn't find Chaim in the apartment, so I decided to sleep and wait for him. I woke up at 5 a.m. the next morning, still dark outside, and decided to go outside to find him. We had slept two nights ago directly on the moss in a beautiful forest meadow close by, and my intuition told me he might be there again. I walked 30 minutes and arrived at the meadow, but saw nothing. I called out, shame, expected nothing, and was shocked and relieved to hear, Jason, all the stuff, my backpack, and shame was there, healthy and just fine. I asked him what happened to me after my memory ended near the lake, and apparently I was responding and speaking still after that point, but eventually we were only communicating telepathically. Or at least, Chaim was trying to do so. In an attempt to pick up on what he thought was my telepathic communication, Chaim lay down on the nearby meadow and closed his eyes. I kept on letting go of my backpack and dropping it on the ground as if I didn't need it, and I walked off alone. We then both had our own solo experiences, and me afterwards. Main learnings and takeaways from the experience. Number one, if I consume this mushroom again, I would always have an experienced trip sitter in a controlled environment to stay safe, especially with higher doses like mine, where I was having out-of-body experiences for hours at a time, but apparently still walking around and interacting with the world. Number two, the mushroom has had no negative effects or after effects on me so far. The light and pleasant, focused feeling on all levels has remained to a lesser degree, even three days after. I feel more connected to myself and the rest of the world and shed a lot of fear after experiencing the nature of our reality. Number three, there was always free will meaning you can always make a choice. That is your birthright. Four, love is God, and God is love. And whatever seems to be happening, the underlying truth is always love, and its inevitable consequence will always be love. Number five, there is a lot that needs to be experienced to be understood especially when it comes to the mushroom. Number six, if I want to live a life of a certain essence, I need to consciously take action and let go of anything that is not part of that essence. Only then will it manifest. Phase analysis slash timeline of the mushroom's effects. First phase, after consumption of raw, Fresh, one day old after picked, kept outside in a paper bag, Amanita muscaria mushrooms. A gentle, gradual sleepiness within 30 minutes, seemingly no matter the time of day, 
We became tired at twelve o'clock noon, after a restful night's sleep, and no tiredness at all before taking the mushrooms. A two-hour nap with visions, and the mushroom clearly communicating. Second phase. Wake up after two-hour nap with a feeling of effortless weightlessness in the physical, emotional, and mental bodies. A buzzing joy for no reason. Desire to use the body, work out, run, walk, hike, breathe, do yoga. Until now, no urine has been consumed after consuming the mushrooms. At this point, we peed out around 300 to 400 milliliters and drank it immediately before starting the hike. Third phase. Within 30 minutes of drinking our urine, the weight of our backpacks and bodies became meaningless, and I felt like I was no longer controlled and a slave to my bodily sensations. But I was controlling it externally, and it was a tool to be in and accomplish whatever I like. Bodily needs and sensations became less prominent and urgent, as if their volume knobs were turned down to one. If I chose to, I could focus on my level of hunger, thirst, warmth, cold, discomfort, comfort, pain, or any other sensation, but none of them could steal my intention from my top priority and focus, which was my intention for the present moment. The volume knob was turned permanently to twelve, while all possible distractions were turned to one. It was as if I had a vibrating, prompting text box at the top of my vision, asking me, what is your intention? And I was fully engaged with whatever I chose to put my focus on. I was a zigzagging, a little bit occasionally as I walked, and wasn't focusing on my path fully. Fourth phase. About one hour after we drank our urine, I felt a feeling of connection and telepathy with everything and everyone and began to see the underworkings of our universe. I experienced other people's experiences simultaneously with my own, still being conscious of my avatar and all its senses. It felt like the ultimate playground, and I felt immense gratitude for having chosen to inhabit my body in this time and place. And I was sure that I am an infinite soul that has chosen this particular experience. All is one. Interesting note. Our pupils were not dilated at all in this state, and perhaps even more narrow than normal. Fifth phase. About 90 minutes after drinking our urine, I started having visions of infinity, unity, the nature slash inherent beauty slash humor of our universe, all possibilities happening infinitely and simultaneously, and all different possible layers of our human experience and the experience of all beings and things. Important, I was not aware of my physical body and where I was walking. And during this entire phase, I was indeed walking and interacting with the world, but not conscious of it. This entire fifth phase period was a blackout period for my awareness of my actual physical body on earth before I entered my human body and consciousness again in the sixth phase. Sixth phase. About three and a half hours after drinking our urine, with a deep and whimsical whooshing and jingling noise inside my head. My consciousness came back to my human body as I was walking along a lakeside. It was as if I just hit restore, save game in a video game, and I instantly teleported to that moment. I had no memory of anything even seconds earlier, and the earliest memory I had judging by the sun, was around two hours ago, walking together with Chain, my trip partner. 
In between, I had no memory, and I was now alone and without my backpack. In retrospect, this period of time was taken up by my fifth phase visions. But when I regained consciousness, I didn't realize that those visions were inside of time and didn't remember them and it felt more like a blackout. This was disconcerting, because I didn't know what happened, and I was slightly worried about shame, and I wasn't sure if the reality I was in now was the same one I started. I wondered if people still spoke French and English, and even if my apartment was still mine, or it's someone else occupying it. Luckily, I was still in the same universe and timeline and we found each other again. I was still feeling the same abilities and in the same time as the third phase. I fell asleep for a few hours, dreamt very vividly, and woke up a few hours later. Seventh phase. After waking up from a short nap, nine to ten hours after drinking the urine, the sensations from the third phase were about 50% intensity all still very pleasant. Eighth phase, 12 to 16 hours in. The effects are mostly gone, with clear memory and awareness of that heightened and focused flow state that I plan on referencing every day to get closer and closer to it in my natural state with no external substances. Summary. This mushroom must be extensively researched, 100% properly identified, and read about by the person eating it, before deciding to take it or not, as anyone could have a very bad experience if they are not prepared for what it has to offer, or even take the wrong mushroom. Expectation management is key, and everyone is responsible for their own life health, and choices. Alright, everybody. That is the end of our story. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Share with us your Amanita Muscari experiences down in the comments below. Check out the other videos and playlists on my channel. And I will see you in the next one, fam. Deuces.